Here's a grid that I have set up for you and you can see that uh, it kind of looks like a normal data grid. We can page between um, what's loaded into the grid. But with this little carrot here, I can expand and you can see that I have a, a number of different relations set up here. Um, here I have basically the, the top here, the idea of a category and the category title. I'm just using fake data here so it's all generated. Um, but then under that I have uh, products and the product title, the quantity on hand, last order date, and the category ID. From here I can page through each one of these items. You notice this is the only area that's being updated within the grid. Uh, I have carrots here because I, when I open this up I have um, some product history um, I have some product history logging here and you can see the change date and the description and effective date and product ID and on and on. But down here there, there's, no, there's no changes so the carrot doesn't show up. So it, it, it knows how to update the UI and uh, be aware of uh, the relations and the data that's, that's available in these relations. Sometimes you'd see something like this and where you'd click on the carrot and nothing would show up because there's no data. The, the grid is uh, smart enough to know how to deal with that. And I do have two different type of relations here. So I have the, the category, I have the product, I've got an inventory rule down here, and then inside of the product I have the history. So you can nest this uh, as much as you want. And so what I'll do is show you how to use the hierarchical grid with the hierarchical data source and those use uh, their own data sources. And um, although there's, there's a couple different pieces involved in order to make this happen, when you see it, it actually, it's actually pretty simple. So let's go ahead and get into Visual Studio and I'll take you through all of the, the steps. Okay, so I'm just starting off with a blank page. I've got nothing more in this page but a script manager. So the first thing that I would like to bring on is, um, well, let's start with our data sources. And so I'll need three data source um, controls. And I'm just going to use object data sources. So I've got one for the category. I've got one for the products. Actually, I need four. I've got one for the product rule, or the inventory rule, excuse me, and one for the product history. So that should give me all of the, the data sources I need. All right, so let's clean this up just a little bit. And if you've never seen that trick before, if you hold down the Alt key and then choose a selection, you can kind of go through and select just parts of a line across lines, which is, which is kind of nice. So all right, let's give these some IDs. Um, this one will be category source. This one is product source. Inventory rule source. And the other class that I'm using is uh, product history. So we'll call this product history source. All right, so let me just run through one of these. They're all going basically against the same pattern. So I've got a category class. And I just have stubbed out the items that would be in the category. So here I just have ID and title. In, in your, your applications, I'm sure a category would have much more to it, but I want to keep it simple. Um, so there's the category class, and each one of my classes, so I have category, inventory, rule, uh, products, and all that, I have a repository class, and its job really is just to build up some fake objects. And I'm using NBuilder in order to do that, which is a, a great open source tool in order to build up some some test objects. So each one has a get all method and I'm just building up some some objects. So you would normally get this out of a database or a service or something like that. Um, but I'm just stubbing it out that, at this point so you can see how the control works. So again that's true for all of them. So let's switch to the designer view and start filling this out. So the category source will look at category repository and for the select it will get all and basically the same thing for product get all inventory rule and finally product history
Now from there, so now that we have our data sources, what we can do is put together our hierarchical data source. So if we hop into the tools here and come down and choose the web hierarchical data source, let's drag this onto the page, and um, we can start to configure our data source here. So the first thing I want to do is say the top level is the categories. So we'll add the category source in. Then I want to add a child to the category source. And so basically I'm looking from the categories into the products. So the parent co column will be the category ID and the child column will be category ID on the products class. So that makes that association. Now underneath the products, I want to see the product change history. So then I'm adding a child to the products and we'll call this product history source. And so I'll be looking at the product ID and in the child columns, I'm coming down here and mapping it to the product ID in the change class. Finally, um, which a, a sibling relation to the product source is the inventory rule. And in my little uh, made up world here, the inventory rule uh, applies to a category. So again, I'm looking at the category ID. So the parent column is the category. Come over to the child column and say category ID. And that there uh, basically puts together all the relations that I need to represent within the web hierarchical data grid. So I'll choose OK. Um, let's change the ID of this property or this uh, control here. And I'll just keep it short. Of hierarchical data source and then the last piece that we need is the web hierarchical data grid drag that onto the page and do that and then all we need to do is select the data source now what it'll do is regenerate all the bands and the columns and all that good stuff for us and that's definitely something I want to do. Now I'll clean things up a little bit in a second down in the markup but first I want to add some behaviors so let's come in and add paging. Now once paging has been turned on this turns it on for the top level of the hierarchical grid but if I come down and say enable inheritance and make that true now all the child bands also you'll see here now have paging enabled. So that's good. And then what I can do, I can go through the designer to do this, but it's actually easier just to do it in the markup. I don't want to see all the IDs. There's really no reason to expose those. So I'm just going to come through and delete the unneeded IDs here. And that makes it just a little bit nicer. So we've got a lot of markup here, but I mean, I guess at this point it's kind of starting to get like XAML, where uh, the markup doesn't really matter all that much as long as it does what you need it to do. So at this point, I haven't written any code. The only code that was written was within my, my class objects and the repository objects. Um, so I'm not really writing any code in the view, which is kind of a good thing too. Um, but if everything's set up right, I should be able to run this and get a grid much like what we saw with our original demo. So there we go. We've got our grid. I can page the grid itself. If I expand this out, I have, uh, you know what, let's switch something first. Because when it gets pulled onto the designer, it gives it a height and a width. And I certainly don't want it 350 pixels high. And let's make the width 600. And now it'll be easier to see everything that we do. So again, here's my grid. I can expand it out. I have my uh, product in instances of the product class represented here. I have the inventory rule down here. I can page my products. That all looks good. And the items with the carrot, I can expand out and have the, the change, the product change class rendered out on the grid. So doing multi-band type of setup within the hierarchical grid is actually very, very easy. The only thing you need to do is, is basically have all your classes or your data source objects prepared in advance. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.